Welcome to our broadcast today. On behalf of Native Christians, my name is Pastor Dan Rautenberg. Glad that you're with us today. Glad that you're here to listen to what God has to say to us. God's got some great advice for us today. And uh, we ask that uh, the Lord would continue to bless you and to bless the word that's going to be preached for you. So whoever you are, wherever you may be listening to this or whenever you may be listening to this, we're praying that God will, will bless these words to you and uh, that he will continue to bless you on your Christian walk. Let's take a look at what God has to say to us today, and, and let's begin with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks today for keeping us through the night from all harm and danger. We give you thanks for waking us up this morning with your mercies, which are brand new and fresh for us today. Your forgiveness is is real, eternal life is waiting, and uh, you give us another day for us to glorify you along the way. We ask that you continue to guide our guide and guard our steps, protect us and our families as we walk on the road to be with you. And we ask you to bring others with us. Uh, help that crowd to grow bigger and bigger that the rooms of heaven may be filled. We ask you to bless the word that's going to be uh, given to us today from you and and uh, help us to put it into practice in our lives and uh, continue to to bless us in our communities where we live, that we may continue sharing that good news with, with everyone that we know. Father, in, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we ask this, and we pray confidently. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, glad to be here with you again today. Uh, glad that you're here listening to what God has to say. And we're in our last sermon series about uh, a technology and its role in our lives and how to apply it. And we, we've had some wonderful things. We've gone through the blessings of technology, the wonderful ways it can be used to spread the gospel. We've also gone through the bad side of technology, how it can become an addiction, how it can be something that controls us. And and a lot of the things that, that you find uh, online or, or with your technology aren't going to be things that are leading you closer to Jesus, but away from Jesus. So got to be careful with that too. Today, we want to talk about a way to balance that out, a way to set healthy boundaries. And I know all of you, uh, um, when we when we use technology, maybe you've you found yourself struggling to set those boundaries. You you started out by googling one thing. Maybe you were looking up a recipe or a sports score, and all of a sudden, an hour later, you've watched you know thirty five or forty videos, and you have no idea where where you are anymore, or what you've been watching, or where the time went. It just flew by, and all of a sudden, you you realize you've wasted a whole lot of time, um, and uh, you won't get it back. How do you set a healthy boundary on that? How do you set a healthy limit for the way that we use technology, not just for us, for our kids and our grandkids as well? We're going to talk about boundaries. We're going to talk about what happens when you cross those boundaries and where you go. There's only one place you can go when you've crossed those boundaries. And uh, we're going to see what God has to say about that today. So Let's uh, take a look at our reading. Our, our reading for today is a very short reading, but we're going to add some context in. It's from Proverbs chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. It says, Now then, my sons, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house. These are the words of our God. So what does that mean? Well, if you open up your Bibles and you look in the book of Proverbs and you're looking through the first seven chapters or so, you'll understand that it's part of an extended picture. And uh, if you go all the way to the beginning of the book of Proverbs, it tells us that the author of many of them, if not most of them, is Solomon. Solomon, who can, was considered maybe to be the wisest man in all the world. Uh, Solomon who also, also had trouble following his own advice. Solomon had a lot of experience when he wrote these Proverbs, a lot of things to draw upon, the good and the bad. And uh, he's trying to, to pass it on to everyone who follows. 
So what he does, if you look at the first seven chapters of Proverbs, you notice that he's building an extended picture. Um, he builds this picture, a contrast between wisdom and foolishness. And he pictures them as two ladies who are giving advice. They are calling out to anyone who can hear them. The first woman is named Wisdom, and she's the one that's giving good advice. She's the one who's giving warnings not to fall into temptation. Don't fall for the lies. Don't fall for the temptress. Uh, she's giving the good advice, the wise advice. And the second lady is named Folly. And she's pictured as an adulteress, a prostitute, an unfaithful wife who is constantly tempting everyone, constantly calling out to the good, the naive, the innocent, come with me, follow me, leading them into temptation. And he draws this picture and he, and he fills it out, these two ladies calling out wisdom and folly, giving advice. And he often addresses the listener as my son. And maybe that's what Solomon was doing, trying to encourage his own children, but also to encourage us, to anyone who would listen. Don't follow the wrong advice. Don't listen to the wrong people. Don't head down the wrong path in life. Or maybe Solomon's trying to set some boundaries for his own son how to listen to wisdom, how to avoid the temptations of the prostitute, the adulterous folly. And Solomon certainly had good reason to try to pass along good advice to his children. He had learned the hard way from the way that he grew up. What happens when there are no good boundaries in life? So if you know a little bit about Bible history, Solomon's dad was David. David, the, the, one of the greatest, if not the greatest king of Israel uh, back in the Old Testament times. And David, though, also had some documented struggles in Scripture as a parent. You might say that David struggled to set some boundaries for his kids. Maybe he didn't say no a lot. Maybe his kids had everything that they wanted. and Maybe that got that idea from him. But in Scripture, his sons, David's sons, seemed to have the idea that they could do kind of what they wanted and have what they wanted. And when Solomon was small, when he was a little boy growing up in his house, that's what he saw. He saw his father sleeping with multiple wives, even killing his neighbor to take his wife. He watched his older brothers doing what they wanted. One of his brothers raped a half-sister. And another brother then killed that brother in revenge. He had an older brother named Absalom who even led a rebellion against his own father, a full-blown rebellion in the whole country tried to murder his own father, get rid of him, and become king in his place. And what did David do? When his own sons crossed the line, couldn't seem to follow any good boundaries in life. Well, the short answer is he didn't do much at all. Nothing. There wasn't much discipline. There wasn't consequence. There weren't many real consequences. His brothers, time and time again, went to places that they should never have gone, Solomon's brothers. He watched them, his older brothers, going to places they shouldn't have gone, doing things they should not have done, crossing lines they should not have crossed. There weren't any healthy boundaries as Solomon was growing up, and maybe he doesn't want the same thing now to happen with his own kids. He doesn't want his own son to self-destruct to harm himself and others because there were no boundaries in his life. Friends, this is actually what 
God calls us to do. He calls parents to do this, and God himself did it for his own people. He set boundaries. He told them clearly, this is right and this is wrong. There are things that you should do and things that you shouldn't do. Lines that you cannot cross, behavior that is not acceptable. There are ways to treat your neighbor, to treat other people, and there are ways not to treat your neighbor and the people around you. See, those boundaries are there. God set those boundaries, and he asked parents to set the same boundaries. And those boundaries are good things. Don't get the wrong idea. Boundaries aren't there to restrict us, to take us away, to fence us in, to take the freedom and the fun out of our lives and make us miserable. No, those boundaries are there because we need them. They're there for our own good. See, if we're honest, we understand that we are sinful people. We've been corrupted, infected, ruined by sin, and we live in a world that's been ruined by sin. We have something inside of us now that's not good, a sinful nature, a sinful nature inside of us that wants to be God, doesn't want to listen to anybody, doesn't want to take orders from anybody, a sinful nature that wants to do whatever it wants, to have whatever it wants to have, to get its way all the time. And you know what that's going to do? That's going to destroy us. Why did God give us rules and commandments and boundaries? Because without them, we self-destruct and we take everyone down with us that's around us. Do you see that's what the Ten Commandments are there for? Have you ever looked at the commandments that way? As God's boundaries to protect us from ourselves? to keep us from self-destructing, to keep that sinful nature from running wild, from being out of control, from destroying us and everyone around us. Think of how your life would be if everyone followed those commands, if everyone stayed within those boundaries. If we loved and respected God and his word like we should, we wouldn't self-destruct. We wouldn't be in danger of losing our souls or losing heaven. Think about how much better life would be if we treated our neighbor the way that God tells us to treat them. How good would your life be if no one ever stole from you, no one ever tried to hurt you or harm you to inflict physical violence, if no one ever disrespected their parents or their people in authority? If no one betrayed you and cheated on you, if there was no divorce, if there was no adultery, <laughs> if there was no one to lie about you, to slander you, to gossip about you, to tear down your reputation, if there was no greed and envy and selfish coveting when you want something that you shouldn't have. Think of how much better your life would be if you never had to worry about anyone doing those things to you. How much better if you never did those things to anyone else? God doesn't set boundaries to restrict us. He sets boundaries there to protect us. Protect us from ourselves and our sinful nature that wants to destroy us. Sinful nature loves to be out of control. And if it gets control, disaster strikes I'm going to read what happens in the, in the verses right after our text for today in Proverbs chapter 5. If you keep reading in verses 8 and, and 9 and following, Solomon talks about what happens if you listen to folly, if you listen to the bad advice. He says if you, if you can't avoid that bad advice, here's what happens. You'll lose your honor. To others, you'll lose your dignity to one who is cruel. 
You'll let strangers feast on your wealth, and your work will enrich the house of someone else. And at the end of your life, you will groan when your flesh and body are spent. You will say, how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructors, and as I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God's people. For lack of discipline, he says in verse 23, they will die led astray by their own great folly. Solomon's words are true. The sinful nature takes over if there are no healthy boundaries in our lives. We self-destruct and we take everyone down with us. And we know how it ends. Maybe you've experienced this in your life. Maybe you've seen it happen before. I've seen it happen way too many times. When no one will listen. You end up standing in front of a casket. Or at a grave. Saying, if only they had listened. We try to say things like, uh, be to God or need a God, like it's their fault or it's your fault and they should have listened. We, we say those things, but those words aren't any comfort in the end. They're not any comfort at all. When a person self-destructs, it's not just themselves, they're hurting. People say that sometimes, right? I can do what I want as long as I don't hurt anybody else. No, you're always hurting somebody else. If you're the one that's ever stood at a casket or at a grave saying, I wish they would have listened, you know that hurts. It always hurts someone. It hurts the people who are watching it. It hurts the people who are caught up in it. It hurts the people who go down with it. It hurts everyone involved. Solomon is right. When there are no boundaries, it always ends badly. Sometimes we don't want to set boundaries because it's hard. What if they get angry? What if somebody walks away? What if somebody pushes you away? Well, guess what? Friends, you have nothing to lose. Without boundaries, they're already lost. You understand that? Solomon did. So he's trying. He's trying not to make the same mistakes that he saw when he was growing up, out of love for his sons, out of love for everyone who would listen after him. He's trying to set some healthy boundaries, set the healthy lines. Here's what you do and what you shouldn't do. Here's who you listen to. Here's who you don't listen to. Here's what's right and here's what's wrong. Don't go there. Because there will be consequences. For lack of discipline, people die, led astray by their own great folly. This is Solomon's encouragement for us now to set some boundaries for ourselves and for our children, and especially at the end of our sermon series on technology. We've been talking about this for the last few weeks. The dangers, the temptations, the addictions of technology Here's where we get to put it into practice. We can set some healthy boundaries so that technology does not control us, does not master us, does not lead us away from God and into behavior that will destroy us and others. So I'm going to ask two things of you in our, in our, as we close up our sermon series. And the first one is this, if you're, if you're looking at your own use of technology or if you're a parent and you have a young person in your life, a child or a grandchild, do you know how they're using technology? Or look at yourself. How are you using technology? How are you using social media? How are they using social media? What things are you consuming? What's going into your eyes? What's going into your brain, into your ears? What are you watching? What are you hearing? What are they watching? What are they hearing? Do you know who their friends are? Do you know what they're watching? Do you know what they're listening to? Do you know what advice they're getting? Do you know how many hours they're spending on it? 
Do you know what sites they're going to? Do you know what sites they're visiting? What things they're looking at? What movies they're watching? What internet addresses they're going to? That is your right as a parent or a grandparent, as an adult. Not just to monitor yourself, but for the kids that God has given you and your grandkids. It's time to pay attention for that. If you haven't been paying attention before, here's your chance. These are questions you should be able to answer. What are they looking at? What are they hearing? And how much of that are they consuming? If your child is staying up till 2 or 3 o'clock watching movies or on their phone, on social media, who are they chatting with? Who are they texting? Who's messaging them? And what is the content? What are they saying to other people? What are other people saying to them? Because those things, those things are important. Those things can make a massive difference in someone's life. And if you're an adult, here's the challenge for you. Your kids and grandkids, unfortunately, probably know more about technology than you do. But it's time to catch up. It's time to look at your own use of technology and look at their use of technology and know where to set some healthy boundaries. Here are the times when we're going to use technology and the times when we're not. Here are the places you're allowed to go to. Here are the places you're not. Look at what their friends are saying. Look at who their friends are. Look at the advice that they're being given. Set some healthy boundaries. Here's the other thing I'm going to ask you to do for today. Know what to do when those boundaries are crossed. Because those boundaries will certainly be crossed. It's the history of the sinful nature. It's, the, it's what the sinful nature does. It's happened all throughout history. If you go back into Bible times, you think God's people ever crossed the boundaries that God set for them? You bet they did. All the time. Solomon crossed those boundaries too. Solomon sometimes, excuse me, couldn't even follow his own advice. And he knew he should have. Certainly his sons did too his kids. And we need to know what to do with that. Because every time boundaries are crossed, there are consequences. There certainly were when God's people crossed those boundaries, when Solomon crossed those boundaries. Not only did God have to discipline them to get them back into line so they wouldn't completely self-destruct and lose their eternal salvation, do you understand when boundaries are crossed, when sin is committed, there are always consequences. Always consequences of sin. Everyone crosses those boundaries. Everyone falls to temptation. Everyone falls into sin except Jesus. And friends, you and I aren't Jesus. So what do you do? What do you do? I'm going to give you some very good news. There is a place to go. There is a place you can go when boundaries have been crossed. There is a place to go with the guilt and the shame and the consequences that result, the fallout of crossing those boundaries. You go to God. He's the only one you can go to. And I'll tell you why. Because he's the only one that can forgive sins. He's the only one that can take those sins off of your permanent record and my permanent record. The only one who can take all the guilt and all the shame and all the embarrassment and remove it completely. The only one who can help us deal with the fallout, the consequences of the times when boundaries have been crossed. He's the God who can lead us through those consequences, which are often very painful. He's the only God that can restore us and give us hope. I want to talk to you about the God that you're worshiping, the God of the Bible. God who made sure that these words were recorded, who made sure that Solomon's advice was written down, who made sure that the history of all of God's people was right there for us to learn from 
and see because it's not just something we learn about our sinful human nature. We learn something about our God, and he is a God who does not give up on us. He hasn't given up on us, not me and not you. God that still loves us. A God that does not stop calling us back to himself. A God who still wants us to be in his family and to live in his home forever in heaven. When you've crossed boundaries, when you're dealing with the consequences and the fallout and the hurt and the shame and the guilt and the betrayal, what do you do? You go to God. You confess your sins to him. Confess it all. And repent of those sins. God, I should not have crossed those lines. I should not have broken those boundaries. I should not have done those things that shouldn't have been done. And I'm sorry. Because when we cross those boundaries, we hurt ourselves and we hurt others and we hurt our God. But when we go to him in repentance, he doesn't cross his arms and turn us away. No, he doesn't write us off as lost causes. He doesn't look at us as hopeless disasters, worthless and unsavable people. No, he does not. He does the exact opposite. He says, I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you to come back to me. He's been waiting to refresh us, to renew us, to restore us. If you woke up this morning... He still has plans for us to serve him and glorify him too. Understand that God is a God who has made us some wonderful promises, like the one in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, where he says, God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and self-control. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit, self-control. In other words, God wants us to have this. God wants to grow and develop it inside of us every single day. And if you're awake this morning, thank Him. Thank Him for waking you up new, fresh, with mercy this morning. Forgiveness this morning. All of your sins, all of your shame, all of your guilt has been taken away. God will not hold it against you. He's given you this day to work with us, to work with me, to work with you, to grow us. Help us to glorify him. Our identity has been completely changed. If you were with us last week, we talked about that extensively. When you are in Christ, you are someone new, someone who's been given a brand new life, a brand new identity. This is who you are. This is how God looks at you, not as a victim, but as a victor. And this is our day for God to strengthen us and work with us to develop those fruits of the Spirit, including our self-control, to help us set those healthy boundaries, to help us navigate through the mess that's left from our past mistakes. He gives us his hand and he walks us through. Not just for us, but for everyone who's depending on us too. Our kids, our grandkids, everyone around us. The last thing God wants for us is self-destruction and misery. No, he wants way better things than that. So he's going to help us and restore us. I want you to, to, to leave today remembering that. We all have struggled with boundaries and setting healthy boundaries in our lives. We've struggled with crossing boundaries in our lives. But here, here God is saying, this is where you go when you cross those boundaries. Come to me. You who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me. He's looking to renew us, restore us, strengthen us. Enable us to continue on with our lives to set healthy boundaries for the way that we use our technology. And he's going to help us do that. He's a God who keeps his promises. So pray that for you today, that we would continue to, to see the boundaries that God places in our lives, 
as things for our good and to set those healthy boundaries in our lives for ourselves and everyone who depends on us, technology and, and anything else. May God bless us in the way that we set those boundaries, especially with our, our technology. Amen. God bless you. Amen.